Excellent. Good morning, church, and welcome to Bethel Thedford. Good morning. <laughs> Tripping over the words there. I'm Pastor Linda. <laughs> and how do you do, Andrew? Is that your hello? Yep. <laughs> A big burp? Yeah. I'm pleased that uh, you've come, and I'm pleased for the people that are on, uh, online as well. Now, Samantha, if you can show the next few uh, slides there. We have a fundraiser that we're working on. And what's that first one? The cheese and gift boxes. Sorry, cheese, cheese and gift boxes? OK, yeah. and what's the next one? Frozen dough and batter. Frozen dough and who? Batter. Oh, batter. Yeah. Right, OK. And the batter next one? That's, uh, oh, one more. That's Frozen meat and something. Meat and appetizers. Meat and appetizers, just in time for Christmas. That's our last one for 2022. If there's anything that you want to order, um, let us know. Stephanie is the one running this, uh, but I can take the orders as well. And it'll be in by Christmas. I don't know when yet, but this is the last week for it. We have to have orders in by Thursday. All right, we're going to sing Praise God. Are you going to give that to Sam or to Hank, or are you going to use it? I can use it. You can do it? I want to. No, you can. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are we ready? I'll do the first line. Okay. <laughs> come to you today with thanksgiving in our hearts and with our mouths full of praise to you Lord you're the only one that's worthy you're worthy of all of our praise and worship today and every day we lift up our brother Don to you today and ask that you continue to be with him and continue to cover him with your healing grace we lift up the Honeyford family to you Lord and ask that you be with them fill their home and their hearts with your peace comfort and healing as they seemingly continue to uh, combat viral infections. Lord, you're the only one who can take care of this, and we leave it at the foot of the cross. Strengthen them, Lord, restore their immune systems so they'll not be hit with each virus that comes along. It's something that we all try to stay out of the way of. Lord, so many are being afflicted with the flu, upper respiratory infections, COVID, and colds. We ask that you clear the air and strengthen each of us that we don't contract any of it. Abba, there's a great need in many small communities for doctors. Places that are small just can't get the doctors in for some reason. We ask, Lord, that you put the desire in the hearts of doctors to serve in and practice in small communities instead of everyone wanting to be in the large metropolises or the big cities. We need them in the small towns too. Give them a heart for the rural areas, Lord. Father, we ask that you be blessed by our praise and worship today and that your word fills our hearts and feeds our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You want to shoot that over there? Okay, we're going to start off with Are You Washed? I'll do the first line. Nope, supposed to be low.
Do we have another one there? Yeah. Okay. Another. There's another another verse. Another verse. Oh, another? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. One day at a time. This is the only day we've got. That's right. We haven't got a clue what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't we have a clue what's going to happen in the next minute. Yeah. We just take what we've got and we live the best we can. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll uh, do the first line here. And I'll try to, I'll actually try to play all the way through it. <laughs> okay. That would be rather ingenious, wouldn't it? I believe in you. Right here. Pardon? I said I believe in you, Linda. I, <laughs> I didn't understand piano taps. But yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for joining in. Uh, please be here. <laughs> and thank you, Ronald, for sticking with it. <laughs> You've got to keep muddling up. All right, we have um, Rand should be up there. It is up there. There we go. Luke 2. Verse 10. I can't read it from here. Sam, do you, can you see that? Right there. Oh, these were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Amen. We need more workers in the fields. All right, this week our uh, prayer focus is Somalia. It's the uh, third week that we're doing... Um, the World Watch list, and that's the most dangerous places for Christians to live. And this is the third most dangerous. We started off with the most dangerous, which was Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Last week it was uh, North Korea. This week we're in Somalia. Uh, 
And so we're, we're asked to pray for them. So we pray for this country all week long. It's uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ that are over there. And um, the only thing keeping them going is prayer. Now, the source of persecution is Islamic oppression and clan, and that's um, family and extended family. The population of Somalia is 16,589,000. There's only a few hundred Christians in that country. The main religion is Islam, and the uh, leader is President Muhammad Abdullahi, Abdullahi Muhammad. The oppression there, uh, for more than 25 years, Somalia has been a safe haven for Islamic militants who constantly target Christians both in Somalia and in the neighboring countries. Groups like extremist Al-Shabaab, which would be similar to Al-Qaeda, but it's, it's another one. There's many of them over there. The small number of believers in Somalia are largely Christians who have converted from Islam and Christians are viewed as high-value targets to Al-Shabaab. Even when Christian converts are not targeted by Islam extremists, they're intensely pressured by their families, and sometimes they're even killed by their families. Any conversion from Islam is seen as a betrayal to the family and to the community. And just the sus suspicion of a conversion can lead to harassment, intimidation, and even murder. It is difficult in these countries, it's life-threatening in these countries to believe in God. And that's why they need our prayer. They need our prayer for strength. 2 Corinthians 4, 9, and 10 is a description of Christians in the RAN countries. RAN is restricted access uh, nations. It says, we are hunted down. This is scriptural. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Let's pray for that country. Abba Father, today we lift up our brothers and sisters in the country of Somalia. We recognize, Father, that how the leader worships is how the country is encouraged to worship. We pray, Lord, that the leader of Somalia... President Muhammad Abdullahi Muhammad has an encounter with you and comes to worship you. We remember the stories in the Bible about Saul who had an encounter and he worshiped you to the day he died and suffered persecution. Lord, let that happen with the president of Somalia. We pray for peace in the land of Somalia and success in establishing a democracy. Build up and strengthen your people in that persecuted land. We ask, Lord, that you give wisdom and discernment to the Christians in all that they do, but especially as they seek to share their faith in Somalia. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I've got something a little bit different um, that I'm doing today. And uh, just bear with me. I, I couldn't get it set up the way I wanted to. So... Um, I'm going down to the other table. Sam, I don't know if you can turn that so you can see these seats. Over the uh, past month, I've been uh, harvesting seeds. Can you, can you see that on there? Turn it a little bit so you can see. Okay, can you see the seeds? Okay, cool. And I started off earlier in uh, the season. And I was doing um, what's called Adam's Needle. And we have those out there, and they're, they're a yucca plant. And they have the, um, the big leaves on the bottom, and then it shoots up, and it has the white flowers that go up. That's called Adam's Needle. Now, and Samantha can attest to this, I got a little more than I bargained for. It because as I was opening up the seed pods, I had to Google how to, how to harvest the seeds. As I opened up the... <laughs> and don't puke on me. I know, I know. Um, that there's worms, worms in there. And I don't mean like the worms that you catch fish with. These were those slimy, yucky. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're um, so I, uh, I had to get rid of some of those. But I've got the Adam seeds here. Here they are. 
They're actually um, a fairly decent sized seed and there would have been a whole lot of them there because I had quite a few of the pods and um, I probably got about 30, 40, maybe that many. Anyway, they're the black ones that are in here if you can see that on there. And they can be taken and they can be planted again. Okay? Seeds. Remember seeds. Okay? I'll put that over there. All right. Now, throughout the Bible, we uh, see stories on agriculture, right? Jesus used agriculture for uh, examples when he was uh, trying to get a message across. Now, that started right at the beginning of the Bible, but not, not with Jesus. This was during creation. And it... Um, Yes, Genesis 1. I don't have that on. Oh, I do have it on there. So if you can uh, drop a, up on the top. There we go. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kind of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees and seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. So we're looking at God for provision. He didn't just plant those plants and the trees for a one-time deal. That was to last forever. So in order to do that, they had to produce their own seed. Otherwise, we were going to get something altogether different. All right. But there again, we have, we're expected to do something as well. Man was put in charge of maintaining the earth. And we have done a terrible job of that. But there's always people that come along and they try to do the best that they can with uh, taking care of it. Now last fall, I had um, done some pepper seeds. Remember that when we were doing chili? And we had... Um, Oh, when you do seeds, you have to uh, store them properly. And we have all kinds of different ways of doing them. This here is called a seed binder. And it's got packets that you can put other packets in. I broke that nail today, so it wouldn't work. It won't work now. Just pick things. Now this packet here is from a couple of peppers. Have you ever opened up peppers and you get all those white seeds in there? You don't want to eat that part, right? Usually we turn around and throw them out. Well, if you save them, you wash them, you clean them, you run them through a sieve to get all of the gunk and stuff out, plant them again next year because they dry. They dry properly. If you put them away before they're dry, you're going to get a packet full of mold. So you have to allow things to dry. But you store them from one year to the next, you label what year they are. And they are viable for many, many years. Sometimes they lose germination, so instead of 90%, you may go down to 85, and so on. But for the most part, they do very well. So that was from last year's, the peppers. Now this year, I thought, okay, I'm going to expand it. Uh, Hank was planting flowers out there, and... Um, so we did some marigolds, but I'm going to do the marigolds after because that's a biggie. <laughs> but I have lavender at home and I had planted lavender. Everybody knows what lavender smells like? Yeah. And Samantha likes playing with it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ellie had helped me. She saw me going out there and get, oh, you took all of the twig ones. <laughs> oh, the twigs are here. At the end of the, ooh, is that strong? At the end of the lavender, you get little twigs that are full of tiny, tiny pods, and each pod has got at least three seeds in it, okay? And the seeds are extremely tiny, very tiny little things. And um, this one here has got, I don't know how many thousand seeds in it, but it's got all kinds of uh, seeds. There's a little bit of chaff in there too, which is fine, because it'll break down. The older, or, as we were doing them, we do, did it into little buckets like this, which is what Samantha started doing this morning, right off the bat. Doesn't it smell nice though when you, you have the lavender? 
So there's a lot of seed in there and there's a lot of chaff in there too. You don't throw it all out. You can take the chaff and this bag has got thousands of seeds in it with the chaff. So you can just rake up where you want to plant it and you just let it grow. And every time you uh, go by it when it's growing, you just wave it and you get the aroma of the lavender, which is very relaxing. And if you have trouble sleeping, lavender is good for that. Everything that God created has a purpose. And it's up to us to take care of it all. Okay, now uh, for the next one, marigold. This here, see all that? That's all seeds. That is seeds and a marigolds. And if you look out there in the, in the side garden, there's still all kinds of marigolds out there. I only took these off of two plants. This is the uh, ones I had taken them from. Okay, that's the flowers. Now what you get is a flower that dries up, it closes up, and you have the dried flower on the top. You take that, you pull that out. Whoops, one of the seeds come out. And it takes the flower itself out. And you toss that, you plant it. And then you uh, open up the pod, and inside that pod you have hundreds of seeds. See that? They all come out. Now, interesting thing, I took one apart too early, and I got some that hadn't formed seed. I got a lot of seed, but there are some that was white all the way down. You notice on these, they've got uh, black on them. But seeds also have to grow. Seeds have to mature. So if they don't have the black on it, it's of no value, other than to break down in the soil and become a bit of fertilizer for it. But seeds have a purpose. Once seeds are planted, they'll grow. Once the word of God is planted, it'll grow. There's a reason for it. Now, Hank had planted balloon flowers out there. Do you know what a balloon flower is? The, um, you've seen them out there. They're the white flower, they look like stars. Oh, That's yeah. called a balloon flower. Those are nice. They're very nice, aren't they? Are they like air shoes? Are those like perennials? Or? They're perennial. Well, yes and no. Oh. They're perennial if you plant the seeds. Uh, now, okay. I took three, whoops, oh, three like this off of uh, a couple of plants, two plants at the sides. Mm -hmm. um, and what I had done is cleaned them out, and I got this one full, and I've got this one, and I've got this one. Yep, I've got three of them, thousands of seeds just from that. And then I thought, oh darn, I uh, didn't save any to show how they come out. And we had that snowstorm two weeks ago now. <laughs> we had the snowstorm. And I was in here and I thought, well, there was some at the front. So I went to the front and I picked, or I cut, I didn't pick, I cut off one and it was so soggy. It was, oh, yeah. yeah, it was yucky. And I thought, well, I'm not going to get anything from it. It's not going to be of any value whatsoever. But if you look on the paper towel here, as it was drying, seeds were coming out. And this is at the bottom of the, uh, where the flower is. And when you look at it, when, once you get the dead, the residue of the flower itself off, you can look inside and you see little pockets. And those little pockets are full of seeds. Well, this is one that left most of its seeds down there. I got three of them there. But I can turn this upside down. Look at them all falling out. Yeah, so, and you can encourage them to fall, for more to fall out. So we'll have to collect those up and put them into envelopes tomorrow. But you uh, save them and you plant them. Now, there's a reason for going through this. It's not an agricultural lesson, really. But what... What it is. It's always more than that. <laughs> this is what you call an abundance. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. 
We don't have to go and buy those seeds because God's already given it to us. It's there. But the greatest gift that God has given to us is eternal life. He gave his son so that we could have eternal life. And his son came to this earth. He came as a wee babe. And that's the season we're coming into. He came as a wee babe. He grew as a toddler. He did things toddlers do. He grew up enough to help his dad, his stepdad. And uh, he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. And then short he started his though. short life, 30, 32, 33, 33, 33 years, 33 years. He had a purpose when he came to the earth. Sin had come into this world in the Garden of Eden. And from that time until Jesus had come, there was no way for eternal salvation. Eternal salvation came with him. Now, he had told a parable when he was doing his ministry on the earth. And that parable is recorded in Matthew and in Luke. Okay, and it's the parable of the sower. And what had, I haven't gone through to that part yet. I'll, I'll get to that, don't worry about it. The, Luke isn't on there, I'm using Luke, okay? And he was talking about the farmer who was planting the crops. And there was a little bit of problem with the seed. Now, you see all the seed that we get here. Some of the seed went onto a pathway. Well, you know if you're walking along and you, you walk on a pathway, that's kind of hard, isn't it? Things don't grow well in a pathway. Things didn't grow there too well either. Whoops, I got seed on that. <laughs> so if you take the time to look in uh, Luke chapter 8, then you'll find the parable of the, uh, the seeds. So the farmer was planting his seed, and some of it fell on the footpath, and it got walked on. Other seeds fell in the, ro in the rocks. Now, I've seen flowers and other things all growing in the rocks, right? Because the dirt gets down in between. Doesn't do well. Doesn't do well. That seed didn't do well either, and it died off. Some fell among the thorns and the weeds. That didn't do well either, because they would get choked out. Do you ever notice weeds grow better than, seed, than flowers or, or uh, vegetables? Weeds are always the tallest things. Weeds are always the greenest things. Well, that happened on the field too. And then there was the seeds that fell on fertile soil. Now, it grew, and it grew abundantly. So was there anything wrong with the seed? No. Was there anything wrong with the farmer? No, no, not at all. The disciples said, we don't understand. What's the reasoning for this? Why are you telling us this? See, that's where the problem was. The problem was with the understanding. They were getting this information, but they didn't know what to do with it. So Jesus had to explain it. On the footpath, people heard the message. The seed is the message of God. It's the message of salvation. You can preach to people until the cows come home. I don't know why that expression is there. You know, why, why? Because they're way out in the field, they just want to make them home, and they want to get fed. And they want to get fed. As long as they're your cows. Well, yeah, there's that too. There's that too. They don't want to go to the wrong place. And, but if they don't understand the message that's being preached, it's not going to do a thing. It's not going to save them. It's not going to do a bit of good to, for them. The devil comes along, takes that message away from the heart, and it's gone. They forget it. On the rocky soil, people hear the message, and they've got it for the moment. For the moment. And then it's gone too. They believe for a while and then life gets in the way and they say, oh, I want to do that. And away they go. The message is dead. Then there's the seeds that fell among the thorns. Oh, I want to tell you, the seeds that fell on the, uh, in the rocks and it's, it started to grow, that can be transplanted. Like we've noticed when you put, um, well, with these, these, uh, Succulents here. I've had to transplant those because they got uh, pot bound in the uh, the tiny pots that they come in, and they start to die. So I put them into a bigger pot, and they're they're doing very well. Same, the one in the uh, reddish colored pot there. It was a tiny thing and it was falling all over the place. I put two of them together in that one big pot, 
and it had come in one of those little uh, two-inch pots, or even, and it's thriving. Or even if you're t able to take something that need, that requires more light and place it where it is. Exactly. The, the, exactly. The parable is right there. Yep. Yep. Okay. So those where the seed goes, it can still grow if you move it and give it more information. <laughs> All right. The seeds in the thorns. The message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. That's self-explanatory. And that never grows to maturity. Again, if the message is uh, given to them again properly, that they can understand it. But the seed that goes into the good soil, goes into a heart that's ready to receive, then it's going to flourish. And God's word will hang on and it will grow. And then that person can plant more seeds and more seeds and more seeds. That's the importance of the uh, seeds. And that's why as I was doing this, I had been working on it for uh, oh, a couple of weeks. And then I thought, it just the Lord said, you've got to use it. <laughs> it's there for a purpose. You've got to use it. It's just like uh, with our music. You don't use it, you lose it, right? Well, I had to get it before I could lose it. But I mean, it's... And part of that I'm new, working on it. And part of that nutritious, fully rich soil that we need as Christians is to probably gather here at least. Gathering together. And, and, and Gathering and, together. Exactly. And people get worried about the, um, uh, the COVID and that sort of thing. And we abide by the regulations. Uh, now with the flu virus coming in and the upper respiratory, it's so important to be washing your hands all the time. Um, a lot of people depend on the sanitizers, which is good if you don't have soap and water. But the uh, soap and water gets rid of more germs than the sanitizer does. And it's usually more readily available and it's easier on your hands. We live in a country that gives us freedom to share our faith. And we need to be thankful for that. We need to be open about our faith. Not to hide it. Live your life the way that people will know that you belong to God through the life-giving blood of his son Jesus. We share the gospel message that uh, that's all. Well, hello. We got a little creeper there. He's uh -huh. taking great big steps. <laughs> we share the gospel message. That's our responsibility. God is the one that changes the people's hearts. We can't do that. John 3, 16, and it's there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That has to be one of the most familiar verses to Christians and non-Christians alike. And that's what they call the gospel in a nutshell because it has everything right there. Many people believe in God, or at least they believe that there is a God. Many don't believe in the Son of God. And if you don't believe in the Son of God, then you don't have salvation. Without receiving the undeniable message of God's salvation through his Son, Jesus, there is no salvation. Okay, Philemon 1, 6. That's the ESV, is English Standard Version. It says, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. It's not for our sake. It's for the sake of Christ. We're to build the kingdom. The message of salvation gives people hope. This is the season that gives people hope. I know a lot of children, adults too, they look for, what am I going to get? Christmas is coming. What am I going to get? What can I have? Instead of saying, I've got Jesus. The reason for celebrating is because of Jesus' birth. And we know Jesus' birthday is not December the 25th. We know it's in the fall. We don't know what date it is. If we needed to know what date it was, we'd be told. That's the same as with uh, Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. We are told when that is. We as Christians don't celebrate the actual day because uh, the government has given us holidays, which is very thoughtful of them. But we know when it all works. And we at least have it in the right season, yes. Could just tell us around what day the flood started, though. The what? When, when I was reading uh, the, uh, the flood, 
the, yeah, but the flood has nothing to do with this. No, I, I know. I'm just saying it. Okay, it let's not digress. Let's keep going there. Okay. We'll be doing the flood again sometime, too. So just remember that. Remember when the date was. Okay. James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Do you remember where else you see that? On our sign, absolutely, very good. The closer to God you come, the more you'll reflect his love to others. The joy of the Lord will be seen in you and through you in everything that you do and everything that you say. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Again, the closer we get to God, the more compassionate we are with other people. 1 Peter 3, 8. You're doing an excellent job, Hank. It's the same as you. Oh, Samantha, you're doing a wonderful job. I'm so no, I wasn't taking it. I don't deserve it. I don't take it. I'm so used to you doing it there. <laughs> okay, 1 Peter 3, 8. All of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted. Keep a humble attitude. If you've got what's called a haughty attitude in the Bible, that means that you're full of pride. God backs away from you. That's not what he wants. He doesn't want somebody that's so full of themselves that they don't have any room for him. As your love for God and your brothers and sisters in Christ grow, so does your commitment to following the ways of our Lord Jesus Christ. It'll become easier and more natural to speak about your faith. Actually, the gospel will become so ingrained in your life that it'll be odd not to speak of it. Romans 1.16. Now, NLT is New Living Translation. That's the one that I usually use. And I default to the others for how it uh, presents. I default to King James because that was uh, one of the original translations and uh, it's the closest to uh, the full meaning, the real meaning. All right, Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentiles. John 14.6, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. <coughs> and remember, it's not your job to convert people. We can't do it. The Holy Spirit does that. What each of us are responsible for is to love our neighbor. And who's our neighbor? Everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. else. Not just the ones that live next door to you or upstairs or downstairs or whatever the case may be. Don't be afraid to invite them to church. Whereas, uh, come as you are church. Just make sure you're dressed. <laughs> let God handle the rest. God can work miracles. So we need to let go and let God. He's the one that does it. Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. He uses us, we're his instruments. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and, 17 and 18. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. We give the message. We give the message with understanding. But it doesn't have to be with words. What speaks volumes is how you are, how you talk, how you act, how you react. The reacting part is the biggie. That's the biggie. Okay, verse 19. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. He gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Verse 21, for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. 
Salvation is through one name and one name only, and that's the name of Jesus. Acts 4, verses 11 and 12. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus is what saves us. Jesus is the Son of God. And if you can't believe that, then you don't believe the message of salvation. That's where the good seeds come in. The message of Christ. The message of Christ. Okay, we've got some more songs to sing. You know, that message is a message of hope too. Because without hope, there is no life. And this is the season of hope. Okay, we're going to sing a few more songs. Starting with the first Noel. And this is <laughs> the music we're using is the old one. So the spelling is the old spelling. Okay, I'll play the first line. Oh. <laughs> it works better when I turn it on. <laughs>
about the blood of Jesus. <laughs> and grow deep roots. We ask, Lord, that you use us as your instruments, instruments of worship, but also instruments of service to you and for you. Show us the way, Lord. Prepare our hearts. We know that the only way to heaven, the only way to eternity with you is in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, who gave his life on the cross that we could all have life, a restored relationship with you, Abba, Father. Help us to be worthy. Direct our steps each moment through the balance of the week until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we finish off with God be with you. I'll play the first line. <laughs> the other times. That's a reminder that God, a reminder we want that God to be with attention. each, we want to remind each other that God is with us. We right. want God to be with us and that's our prayer, that God will be with each and every one of us. Absolutely. And I also finish off with, God bless each and every one of you and may God be with you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Pardon? I need to be paid more attention. That might help. That might help. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That was excellent.